and it looks like Janice is now ready. Is that correct, Janice? Correct. I'm here. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to introduce my good friend Janice Smith from ePortfolium, the, the folks that bring us uh, Karuta, and she's going to talk about an efficient way to develop and research data management skills of aspiring researchers using Karuta. Take it away, Janice. Okay, I am attempting to share my screen. We hear you, but don't see it yet. Try again using a different browser. I didn't know I was supposed to use Chrome. So, uh, Wilma, can you run my slides from the discussion? It, um, it says to request access when I go to that link. You can open them up for me. I can screen share. So say that again. I don't understand. I need, I need access to your slides. When I go to the link, it says uh, you need to request access. Doesn't, Wilma oh. doesn't have permission to view your slides. Change to anyone with the link. Okay, done. Now can you do it? Yep. Let me take Great. the camera back. All right, back to big blue button. And here's my camera. But I don't, you actually don't need to see me. You just need to run the slides. They're coming in now. We're right, also beginning to see you. All right, Can start the clock. <laughs> this is a presentation on an efficient way to capture a learning process and put it up for your students using the Karuta open source portfolio. It was, it was developed by a team of, of folks that are listed here, full credit to them. I'm just the mouthpiece for today. Next slide. So, first of all, n let it be known that Karuta has developed into a Swiss army knife that supports learning in a variety of different ways with a variety of different methods. You can use LTI to integrate Karuta with Sakai. Um, so this session talks about how to respond to new expectations for publishing research data and how faculty can capture learning criteria and rubrics and help their aspiring researchers acquire skills to publish their data. Next slide. The challenge is that the field has changed such that data are expected to be published along with research findings. But grad students and postdocs often lack the skills to do this, and faculty like the, lack the time and resources to address the challenge. Next slide. So how can we capture learning criteria? Well, an obvious way is to do it with rubrics. In this project, next slide. We have experienced researchers acting for their fields in identifying the skills required to publish data, constructing one or more rubrics to capture these skills, and organizing them with rows of similar skills, columns for mastery of skills, and cells with measurable descriptions of the skills. RDM means research data management. We are producing several levels of rubrics, a general one, field-specific ones, which are really boiling down to physical sciences, biological sciences, social sciences, technical sciences, and perhaps a few more, and an interdisciplinary rubric for innovative groups. Next slide. The, 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 uh, the rubrics are organized in different ways according to how the researchers see things, but this is how one set of rubrics were organized. Uh, a group of skills for planning, a group of skills for organizing, another for analyzing, and another for sharing or publishing, with the idea of drilling down to uh, individual skills uh, to be mastered. Next slide. This is a sample rubric from the Earth and Space Science researchers. They put, they put their skills into four different rubrics with uh, four levels of mastery and many rows of, of uh, group, similarly grouped skills. Next slide. So the Swiss Army knife for learning. Let's look at what Karuta can do. Next slide. 
CUDA is very flexible. You can create all types of portfolios, but we're finding you can master all types of learning processes. I mentioned LTI. It has responsive design for use on multiple devices. It can be multilingual. Uh, any language can be captured using CURUDA, and we have support from a commercial partner, ePortfolio. Next slide. In CURUDA, there is an interface that allows uh, technical people on the campus to organize different resources according to a specific workflow for different actors with a great, great dashboard to summarize and unify the activity. Next slide. So what does the RDM ePortfolio using Karuta look like? Next slide. Well, this is still a prototype. We're starting out with our earth science specialist. It will soon go into pilot sessions at Kyoto University. Um, the, the four rubrics can be accessed by the users here. They will have uh, the assistance of an instructor, but the tool is designed to be mostly self, uh, self, um, self organizing and self sufficient. Next slide. Here is a uh, example of the, the, the tasks that a, um, that a user can can do basically the idea is for each rubric to be able to upload data that addresses the different skills. So next slide. This will show it a little bit better. So in, if, a, if a student is uh, learning to plan their data, they will look for different evidence from different projects that they have already done or plan to do upload multimedia evidence from that project and categorize it according to how it addresses the learning criteria from the rubric. They will then self-evaluate um, according to their own thinking about their skill in this regard. Next slide. Then the faculty instructors and research faculty associated with the project will go in to um, use a dashboard that will either concur with the student's evaluation of their current skill level or suggest ideas for improvement. So this dashboard is the time saver for both the student and the faculty member, and it is a way for them to communicate in the project in either a hybrid or a fully online situation. Next slide. To learn more about Karuta, you can go to our, web, our project website uh, or through the Aperio website. You can download it. You can uh, practice integrating it with Sakai. Uh, you can get our help by contacting it. And you can go to a demo portfolio that we call the Pandemic ePortfolio and um, explore what can be done with it. So this is this, to summarize, next slide. Thank you for listening. What my, my goal was to tell you about our exciting new uh, work with the research data management skills, but also to uh Oh, I think we lost I think her. I think we might have lost Janice. We're uh -oh. just about out time. of time anyway. Well, <laughs> Hello? Dennis, are you there? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing because I think that was her last slide. Yeah, you know, that's too bad. So uh, at least that. she got all the way through. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we heard it all the way to the end, Janice. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, and, and we don't really have a lot of time for questions, but um, you have Janice's email, so um, you can follow up with her or with the links that she posted. Um, for more information, if you would like to connect with her. More um, there we go. Are you back? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. back. I got okay. it. Yeah, we well we we're out of time, so I'm gonna my buzzer is gonna go off shortly anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I want to underscore what Wilma said, which is each one of these presenters has information that's been uploaded uh, into the Sakai site for the Sakai Virtual Conference and. You know, stay in touch with each other, ask more questions, get connected. This is what it's all about. So Janice, people will reach out to you 
Um, there are so many questions I want to ask, but we have to do it later. Yep. Well, thank but, you guys so much. Um, we are at 140, so I want to keep us moving. We got a 10 minute break between now and our next round of workshops. Um, the three workshops coming up are um, How Healthy is the Sakai Community? Putting Open Source Health App Factors Assessment to Use. Um, so uh, if you want to join me and Josh and Dave Wiedemann and Martin in that session, that's happening right after this one. Um, Dave Eveland is doing a session on course design is key, melding solid teaching principles with flexible and powerful technology. So if you're interested in course design, um, some you know instructional design type topics, you might want to go check out Dave's workshop um, on that topic. And then um, Sean Foster is going to be leading a discussion on reimagining Sakai's tool offerings. So um, if you're interested in talking tools, um, you might want to check out Sean's workshop coming up. Um, so hopefully everybody will stick around for the last um, few sessions. We got one more round of workshops and another round of lightning talks before we close. Um, so. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you in the next session.